So I'm passionate about Australian manufacturing and about Australian made. So I'm going to go on a journey and catch up with some champions of industry to find out what Australian manufacturing and what Australian made means to them. My first stop is to meet with Rachel Kelly at Vitasoy. She's the project facilitator and has a depth of knowledge in manufacturing and engineering in the food industry. So when we talk about Australian made and what does Australian made mean for you, people don't realise that Vitasoy is made here in Barranduda with Australian almonds, Australian soybeans. Being Australian made means so much more than just importing a product and buying it off the shelf. We have great produce. We have a fantastic water supply that is clean. We work well together and we collaborate. We should be proud of those products and we should sing it to the highest hilltops. So Rachel, what do you see as one of the biggest challenges for going forward? I think from what I see is that we have great expertise, but I'm worried about that expertise built through the younger generation. Whether, you know, manufacturing is not seen as a savvy job to do, and maybe they don't know what manufacturing is all about. It's not just putting things in a box anymore. It goes much deeper than that. Next, I meet with John Pastro from Pastro Ag. He's revolutionised the way farmers protect their crops. John, uh, what's your purpose and your drive? Jeez, I'd have to say, I want to be the leading spray manufacturer in Australia. Fantastic. I do a lot of travelling and I speak to a lot of customers. You've got to go there and listen to what they're trying to achieve in the market, from farm to plate, and we're there to help them achieve that. It just changes so quick. Different Everything. soil, different demographics, the way they farm. That drive that you've got there really is what we're talking about. As Australians, we're really good at changing what we are. When I went into business, I thought, oh yeah, I'll just build one or two products and it's going to suit all of Australia. Mate, didn't I cop a quick lesson of that? So, as far as actual manufacturing. The people's perception of going, oh, no way I can make of that here. I don't think a lot of people understand how clever we are at engineering. A real <laughs> perception problem out There's there, isn't it? There's a perception problem yeah. that everything is imported. How can we change that? To me, it's delivering the customer a quality product. We can build these better than anyone in the world because we are a clever nation in agriculture. Fantastic engineers, we've got clever people on the land, we've got clever people everywhere, and I think we should utilise it. My next stop is to meet with Brett Robinson, the GM at Wilson Transformers. Wilson have been revolutionising energy distribution in Australia for decades. Brett, Wilson Transformers has always seemed to be a really innovative company. We identified that there was a move to clean energy a number of years ago and we've invested exactly in this factory here to deal with that. But what it means is our products have changed. But the innovation requires an incredible amount of engineering, development, trials, prototyping. And we're talking about the best in the world and best practices, aren't we? Yeah, look, we've partnered with the best inverter manufacturer in the world out of Germany. They have very, very high standards. And for us to develop a product from scratch and be only their second manufacturer for their range of products, it's actually very important to us. And our staff are absolutely proud of the point that we've reached. So when we look at the future of what manufacturing is in Australia, I mean, Wilson Transformer, to me, is the perfect example that we're talking about. In the past, it was was a supplier customer relationship and it was a transactional relationship. The way I see the future is strategic partnerships. Rather than duplicate investment and duplicate resources, we should be working together to come up with the best product and the most competitive product to suit our markets. Next I meet with Andrew Stead from a fourth generation family ag business. I would love to hear his thoughts on Australian Made. Andrew, give us a bit of a story about how you've arrived at this point to build such a fantastic business like Grainline. As a family, we've been passionate about the agriculture market and specialising in the grain handling. We're in a fourth generation business. What's driven you and your father and your team here to really come up with the products you have now? Yeah, well, the key is listening to the feedback of the customers to meet their needs in the field. Being in manufacturing, we've got full control over what we produce and can quickly refine, adjust and develop to meet the needs that are presented to us. When we talk about Australian made, what does that mean to you? Australian made means a lot to us and it also means a lot to the industry. Farmers are patriotic and they're passionate about supporting Australia. In manufacturing, you're building a product that you can put your name on it and you put it out in the field, support it and it builds trust. Relationships you build in the field is what keeps you through for the next year yep. and the next generation. My next guest is Stuart Walker from CC Unisurf. Their products service heavy duty industries all over the planet. 
So when we talk about Australian manufacturing, an LRS unit like this that most people won't realise it's this giant motor starter for both mining, concrete and pumping. We used to import from overseas, adapted it to our situations and then now we're just exporting because you guys are the best at it. Well this is a prime example. This one's going to Peru. It's going to four and a half thousand metres elevation and that's very significant. We couldn't do that if we couldn't manufacture these things in our way. That's really been born from the innovation from here. The quality of the solution is also reflected in the quality of the build and that's one of the main reasons I think that Australian manufacturing needs to be celebrated. We can do things that others either can't or won't do because of volume. You couldn't make something like this as a one-off in many many parts of the world and have it done properly. Here we can rely on not only local parts, local supply, quality, we can also rely on the fact that when something needs to be changed it can be done. So when we talk about collaboration, where we're adding our expertise and you're putting your expertise in it to come together. I see what happens in the future as organisations like ours and yours working closer together. It happened in the UK 15 years ago, it needs to happen here as well. We need to get smarter about what our options are. My next stop, I meet with Ralph Galuzzo at Flavortech. Flavortech are global leaders in aroma and flavour recovery, extraction and evaporation solutions. People don't believe you when they say this is made in Australia, innovative machinery for the food and beverage industry, and they go, what, in regional New South Wales? And you go, yeah, this is what we have been producing. And we've been doing it for 40 years. A lot of the Australian companies think, for me to get something like that made, I have to go to Denmark, I go to Germany. The technology that's on the absolute top level of the planet, isn't it? We consider ourselves to be the, the roles Royce in the equipment that we do supply and I think our customers expect nothing less. We try to explore new ways, more efficient ways to fabricate our equipment. When you're selling machines like this in the food and beverage industry, the presentation means a lot. But that's what your customers expect, don't they? We have repeated business and, and I think that proves what we are building is first class. When you've got the customers coming back, wanting another one, you've obviously benefited their business, they're expanding with our technology, they're coming back and go, we want more. What does Australian made mean to you? Australian made means to me producing a quality product. We're keeping people in the job here in Australia where we have the technology, the know-how, and we don't have to send it overseas. Something we can definitely be proud of. Very innovative, right up there with the rest of the world. A lot of people underestimate what we can do here in Australia, and I think Flavortech has proven that. Next I meet with Paul Burns at ATS. They have been producing target systems for decades, and again, are global leaders in what they do. When most people talk defence, they really have this image of a tanker, an F-35 fighter and a submarine, and we seem to forget about the man on the ground. You're right, it is all about the soldier at the end of the day. And this company started over 60 years ago with a World War II veteran, and he came home thinking that the Australian soldiers weren't well prepared. So he came up with a device that created an image of an enemy coming up, you fired at it, if you miss, he still stood there. If you got him, he dropped back down. It's the combination of Ken Gillam's military experience experience from the battlefield with an electrical contractor. They created this thing called the Marksmanship Training Range. The rest of the world started to see how we were doing it here in Australia and we became world leaders. So an Australian product topping the whole idea for the world. When we talk about yourself, we talk about the career path and what manufacturing is going to be in the future. So I'm a local boy from Albury Wodonga and I always wanted to join the military and I joined the military as a soldier. And then I decided to become a, an officer. When I look at my journey, I've taken the same ideas that Ken Gillam had and brought in this sense of purpose, which is enhancing the judicious lethality and survivability of Australians and those who protect Australian interests. I then team with guys like yourself who have got the manufacturing expertise and we bring that innovation, that know-how of the battlefield with your know-how from a manufacturing point of view to create world-leading innovative products that make sure that our soldiers and our police officers are best prepared. How do you see that as the future of, of Australian manufacturing? People do business with people. And part of that journey for me was finding the right partners. Your ideas coming into a vision that we want to put on the training environment will probably far exceed my initial expectations just because we're collaborating. If we did it in our own way, by ourselves, we wouldn't have reached the goals and the expectations that uh, we initially set ourselves. Finally, I meet with Senator Bridget McKenzie to get her take on what she thinks about Australian manufacturing and what Australian made means to her. So Bridget, I suppose we're here talking particularly what your opinion is on Australian manufacturing and what Australian made really means. Yeah, Raymond, I just love it. Like I can't get enough of advanced manufacturing. My passion comes from 
a belief that we need to be making things here at home. We need to have that sovereign capacity. We've offshored a lot over recent decades. It's time to bring it home. That is really hitting home at the mm. moment for Australians. When we say, oh, it'll be too expensive to make it at home, well, that's actually not the case. And, you know, we've got the cheapest, cheapest, steel, on cheapest the steel on the planet here at home. Well, even if it is, we employ people in this country. That's right. That's a story we probably need to get out more so that politicians and boffins yep. at all can actually get the truth. I know that's where I thought the policy makers and the politicians know what they want, but it's that yes minister part between of that procurement that are going, well, am I working in my KPIs or am I working for the bigger picture? I think you're right. It's about giving businesses like yours the confidence then to invest in yourselves and grow and purchase the type of equipment that you've been able to purchase to take that next step. Not be doing old fashioned manufacturing, shall we say, but that really advanced cutting edge 21st century manufacturing. We've had those discussions about training yeah. apprentices re-educating the Australian populace to what it means to become a tradesman. Well, I think, you know, that whole I work in a factory, people have these very old-fashioned visions of what that means for their careers. Truth is, is that you're in a high-tech, innovative, world-class workforce that's a career, not just a job, and there's lots of different options to grow and expand. been quite a journey over this last week to catch up with some champions of industry and when we summarise what that Australian made and what Australian manufacturing meant to them, we really need to re-educate Australians that Australian manufacturing is as strong as it's ever been. Australian made is something to be proud of and gives us job security into the future and we need to educate the next generation that there's so many pathways into manufacturing. We need to continue to innovate not only our products but our ideas. It gives us the opportunity to send them anywhere else on the planet. And when we have that education and that innovation, what it creates is a sustainable Australian manufacturing industry. It also gives us the opportunity to celebrate that we are really good at what we do. Let's create a new Australian made together. <laughs>